played a very laid back, a 40s, a, a sort of a, uh, a ballad, a 40s, a 30s, 40s sounding ballad, sounding ballad by Giselle McKenzie, hard to get a few minutes ago. Now I want to do something, do, do sort of a 180 degree turn and play some rock and roll, some early rock and roll from back in 1955. Billboard's uh, magazine of September 24th, 1955. We, they didn't do a Hot 100 back then, but they got uh, they got three charts here uh, that I'm out well I'm outsourcing one of them and there's the best sellers in stores most played in jukeboxes and there's most played by jockeys and the rock and roll song I want to play for you is at number eight on the most played by jukeboxes across the nations and the sock cops putting a, a five cents or a dime in playing Boyd Bennett Boyd Bennett and the Rockets doing 17 now here's the thing you gotta understand about the 50s it's not like it is now it was it, it was so common to have the same song covered, made popular at the same time by two, three, sometimes four or five artists. So it is with this song seventeen. The Fontaine sisters are at number five with their version of seventeen almost played in jukeboxes. Rusty Draper has a version on here too, I do believe. Uh well, uh let's see. Well, I know he had a version on here. I thought he did. Well, Rusty Draper also had a version of it in nineteen fifty five. The song Boy Bed the Rockets. Yes, yeah, seventeen, baby. We're rock and roll. This is Bill Haley that comments all the way. Got that, that dance, that rock and roll dance beat that the parents did not like, the older folks didn't like. But hey, that's rock and roll. That's what it's all about. It's supposed to piss off the older people. Don't want your grandparents listening to rock and roll. This is your thing. This is your music. Not theirs. 17, Boyd Bennett, bo born at Muscle Shoals, Alabama. That's right, right here in Alabama. About uh, Muscle Shoals, about... What, about, gosh, three or four hours from here in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Buddy first formed his first band in Tennessee. Um, his grandfather, now get this, his grandfather taught him how to read notes, music notes. He learned how to read music notes when he was four years old before he can actually read song lyrics. Boyd Bennett. But Boyd Bennett, he grew up in the teeth, the relentless, harsh, the traumatic teeth of the Great Depression. He took any job that he could get. He sang in quartets. He sang, he played guitar. He sang outside of bars. Probably putting away a little uh, a jar or something like that where he'd drop in some money while he's playing his guitar singing. But when he was about, uh, he was a teenager, trying to think, maybe 17, 18 years old, uh, he was uh, in World War II. He, his, he was drafted. He might have volunteered, but he was in World War II. Basically, for the duration of the war, was mustered out in 1944, 1945, got back into the music biz again, had his own backup band. At 19, now get this. <laughs> this is so lovely. This is, this is trivia that I die for. 1952, Boyd Bennett and his band, they, they were on a TV station in Louisville, Kentucky called WAVE. That, and Boyd Bennett came up with an idea of forming his own musical variety show, sort of like the Gene Autry show. Remember the Gene Autry show back in the early 50s? Gene Autry and his singing cowboys? Well, Boyd Bennett came out with a brilliant idea. Idea. It would be called, his, his show, his band would be called Boyd Bennett and his Space Buddies. <laughs> Instead of dressing up like singing cowboys, they'd be dressing up as singing, as singing buddies. I, I, I mean, as space cadets. They dressed up as space cadets. It was a hit in Louisville. It was a musical show mixed with humor. Click with the audience in Louisville. Now, uh, they were playing a ballroom in Indiana. I guess it would be about 1954, 1955. They were spotted. By, by record label executive. I mean, this guy was kind of, he was kind of big, sort of big, seminal back in the mid-50s. His name was Sid Nathan of King Records. And uh, they released by a couple of country tra tracks that didn't do anything. Boyd Bennett, though, Boyd Bennett, he went to the, uh, well, he created a new sound by 1955. He, he wanted to expand his sound to where it would appeal to teenagers. And you could just croon these big Crosby, Frank Sinatra tunes to, to appeal to teenagers. By 1955, it's, it's time to get cranked up on some rock and roll. Some R&B rock and roll. Got to do it. 
yeah, but my parents hate this music so much. Well, F that. As for you, 13, 14 year old, 1955. He went into, well, I'm not sure how this came about. He started playing around with the drums, creating this new sound. Boyd Bennett did. He also worked with session musicians, such as, well, he worked with other musicians, such as Otis Williams and Bill Doggett, created this rock and roll sound. Helped create this rock and roll sound. Or put his own take of rock and roll, Boyd Bennett. Boyd Bennett and his band, they were known as the Rockets by then. They rented the, uh, the King Studios. We're in the King Studios, and they recorded. Now get this: they recorded. They recorded several records, Boogie at Midnight, and they also recorded Poison Ivy, which was later made famous by the Coasters. Uh, gosh, 1958, 1959, written by uh, Mike Stoller and Jeff Lieber, and uh, that led to a recording contract. Sid Nathan was pretty impressed. Their records sold. Well, they weren't big hits, but they sold. It was enough to impress Sid Nathan to sign them to the King record label. And they came out with 17. <laughs> 17. Number 5 on Billboard's Hot 100. And uh, the version by the Fontaine sisters went to number 3 on Billboard's Hot 100. Well, I don't want to say Billboard's Hot 100. Just Billboard's charts, period. Well, this is it. This is rock and roll. Mick Jagger, he had it right. It's only rock and roll, but I like it, baby. Give it to me 24 hours a day. Boy, Bennett and the Rockets was 17.